Ladies and gentlemen, the following performances will be focused on the theme of love for all beings. All life forms or beings are the presence of the divine. Therefore, there is kinship and interdependency within all forms of life. Who better to convey the sentient nature of our animal friends than a telepathic animal communicator who works with them on a daily basis? Ms. Dexter Del Monte is a highly talented and internationally known telepathic animal communicator from Los Angeles, California. An artist, teacher, and longtime practitioner of meditation, Ms. Del Monte has taught thousands of school children how to care for and communicate with animals, as well as introducing them to art yoga, and meditation. She also helps to resolve behavioral problems, communicates to animals in spirit, helps to locate missing animals, and facilitates emotional and physical healing for both human caretakers and our animal friends. Adhering to the principle of ahimsa, or non-violence, Ms. Del Monte lives a vegan lifestyle and avoids all animal products. Today, Ms. Del Monte will share some words with us on the divinity of animals. Let's welcome Dexter Del Monte with a warm round of applause. Hello. I'd like you all to close your eyes for a moment. Get comfortable and just close your eyes. Okay? Everybody take a nice deep breath. Hold your breath. Bring light up into your head and out the crown. And exhale very slowly, pulling your navel into your spine very gently. Now inhale again, filling the abdomen with air, filling it like a balloon, bring the air up, the breath up. Focus at the point between your eyes. And exhale all the breath out. And inhale one more time. And exhale, breathe normally, keep your eyes closed, feel the contact of your skin against your clothes as you breathe in and as you breathe out. And open your eyes. This is what animals do not have to do because our animals are already in that eternal vast space. For the most part, animals stay in that present moment awareness. We don't. We have a lot of chatter in our minds. And the Buddhists refer to it as monkey mind because our mind swings from one thought to the next. Very rarely are we present. We're lost in the future and we're lost in the past, we're not here now. So our minds aren't receptive and our animals are always talking to us but we don't hear them. The first time I heard animals, way before I was doing this professionally, um, my mind was focused and relaxed. I was writing and my pen ran out of ink. So I was walking through the house looking for a pen and all of a sudden, I heard this voice, very distinct and clear. I heard, look out, I'm down here. And I looked down, and there was my cat, Bubby. He was just laid out there, stretched out, just staring back at me. He stopped me from trampling him. And animals are always trying to get through to us. 
and they'll do a lot to get our attention. I was really stressed out and I was, I was scattered and, and doing too many things at once. And all of a sudden my cat walked in front of me and right in front of me he, he peed right there on the rug. And because I do this work, I knew he was trying to tell me something. And so I looked at him and I thanked him. And I said, I got it. I have to slow down. And I did. And he didn't do it again. So listen to your animals. They're really trying to get through to you. Animals are here to wake us up. They want to bring us back into that present moment awareness. Because when you're there, there's a flow. And you all know that flow. You've, you've been there when your day is magical and everything goes right and there's no lines in the grocery store and you get through traffic and you get where you're going on time. And if you notice your mind states at these times, you'll notice there's no resistance in your mind. There's no um, anger. There's just acceptance. You don't have any fear. You don't have any doubt or worry. So this is what our animals are trying to tell us. They want us to surrender and they want us to trust. And they want us to stop and smell the flowers. We're, we, we just take on way too much. When I began my Zen practice in 1994, I was living with cats, a lot of them at the time, but I realized that they had um, all the virtues that I wanted to cultivate. Patience, Kindness, understanding, generosity, playfulness, forgiveness, loyalty, compassion, poise, confidence, and a huge capacity to love. These are the things that animals are here to teach us. They are truly our Zen masters. And it was at this time I took vows to not create suffering for others and um, to not take life. So that's when I became vegan. Because how could I continue eating meat and wearing animals when I know how they think and feel and um, have, have opinions no different than, than me, no different than you? They grieve. They love their families. They cherish their lives just like you cherish yours. And despite the cruelty and suffering that they have to endure in the hands of humans, they go on loving us. They hold nothing against us. They love us without judging, and that's divine love. They have divine love for us. They allow us to experience our true nature. Our true nature is love, but we have so much fear and so much doubt and worry in our minds, we're not always in touch with that. And so our animals, they're always bringing us back, bringing us back, bringing us back. If we treat each other as our animals treat us, the, the world would really be a much kinder place. And they're not pets. They're our companions and our colleagues. And they're helping us to, to take us away from the darkness and into the light. And they're helping us to open our eyes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Del Monte, for that insightful speech. It would be so wonderful if all beings can communicate with each other. Then love and peace would flourish on this beautiful blue planet. I absolutely agree.